News Radio 840 WHS. Good Sunday morning. Bob Sekolder, Louisville Real Estate Show with you to the top of the hour. We've got some great folks with and some good questions. First, we are welcoming Cora Henderson from Pitt and Frank LLC. Cora is a great attorney over there and knows her stuff. You can reach Cora and the staff over at Pitt and Frank Attorney at 895-9900. Also here, another friend, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service. You can reach Brad and his team at 844-411-TEAM. By the way, the Home Team Inspection Service, uh, Brad owns, is the number one Home Team Inspection Service in the country eight years in a row. And now we're trying for number nine. And my son Greg is right now uh, kind of out of uh, pocket. He had a spill in the kitchen, so he's... At home, working on, but he'll be on the show a little later, a little bit. And you can reach me, Bob Sekolar, anytime, day or night, even weekends as well after the show, by calling. If you're thinking about selling your home or buying a home, you can call me at 376-5483. And incidentally, if you'd like to see a rebroadcast of this, we're actually recording this because we're doing our Zoom shows. And you can go to LouisvilleAnswers.com. That will get you an immediate look at the show visually as well as audio. And on top of that, um, you'll get a chance to see some of the other videos that we do. All right. So we're going to go to the question. Send me an email, Bob, at com, And in the subject line, put radio question. And then after that, put the question in the body of the email. And that's exactly what Nancy did. So, Cora, Nancy sent in this email. She said she lives in a condominium complex right here in good old Louisville. The condo board is charging fees for maintaining the lobby and other common areas. And Nancy says there's nothing that she or her fellow neighbors have seen in the bylaws about common area fees. And she says, is it legal to charge condo owners for common area fees? And if it's not uh, in the bylaws, what should she do? Great question, Nancy, and I'm sorry that you're experiencing that. I can only imagine how frustrating that would be for you, Nancy. Uh, First thing, I would love to get a call from you over at Pitt & Frank, 502-895-9900. We take on clients with cases just like this, but I think that your inkling is correct. I would be concerned if they are practicing something that was not captured or allowed for under their bylaws and restrictions. Moreover, the recorded bylaws and restrictions. So we would want to, first things first, run that title exam, double check what is a public record and look at those restrictions under a microscope, not literally, but uh, figuratively speaking, to see if there is any language that will allow for them to charge for those common areas. It is quite typical that they'll charge for it, of course, as a limited common element that all the unit owners would enjoy. But I would expect that to be captured in that legal document that was probably made a part of that condo regime and the development when it first came to fruition. So give us a call. Let us take a a deep dive into it uh, before I promise anything over air, uh, but would love the opportunity to see if we can better serve you. All right. Good job, Cora, on her first question out of the box. It's the headset. It is. You you have folks. Listen, do yourself a favor. Go to LouisvilleAnswers.com when you get a chance. And she is sporting this amazing gaming headset that we're still working on the volume levels, but I think we can work with it. And it's got colors, and and Cora is displaying it fashionably. Really very nice, Cora. Very good. All right, so we move on. So we talked about this, Brad, last week from a legal standpoint. I'll recap what we talked about, um, but – Samantha sent us this email. She said she's got a house she wants to sell. She had a termite inspection done ahead of time. And the termite guy says there's only one thing he found was a single track in the basement leading up from the window going down about six inches on the concrete at the at the window. Mm. The termite set guy who was there says it was not an active track. Now, Samantha wants to remove all signs of evidence of the termite track, so when she sells the house, it doesn't show any signs of termites. So she's wondering what trouble can she get into. So we answered that last week, and what we found out was as long as she dis- discloses the fact that there were was one single track, it's mud tube. mud tube, that she can do that. She can remove it. So the question that we wanted to ask you is how does she actually safely remove it? Does she throw water on it, or how would, how well, would that work? 
Yeah, so they're literally mud tubes. Um, old termites will travel. The type of termites we have here are subterranean termites. So they're constantly going to the ground looking for water sources. And then they come back up to their food sources, the cellulose that they need. So they build tubes. You don't you don't see these termites. Uh, they travel in these mud tubes. But each year after they finish with the mud tube, they go back in the ground. The mud tubes, obviously, they don't clean up after themselves. So they're left there. So when we're doing inspections, termite inspections, uh, on homes, we're looking for those mud tubes because that gives us an idea that there's active termites in the house. You can tell the difference between the old mud tubes um, and the newer ones. Now, obviously, ones in the basement, you know, that aren't affected by rain don't get washed away. So once you knock them down, there may be some staining that's left behind. But the inspectors are looking for activity. Mud tubes tells us that termites have been there, and then we have to look to see whether or not it's been treated. But yeah, I think as long as it's been disclosed, you know, that's okay. The Inspector is still going to be looking for active uh, termite activity. You know, it's not just mud tubes we're looking for. We're tapping on the wood. We're 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 probing wood. We're looking for any areas of of hollow sounds. Um, we're looking for areas that have become brittle because the termites eat the soft part of the wood. They call the spring wood, um, and it's the harder you know wood that's left behind. So it, there's a hollow sound when uh, when the termites have eaten eaten up the inside of it. You know, and this is swarmer season. You know, this is the time of year that you know the winged nymphs will come out and people will see them all over. I, I was, the who? Wait, the who? The winged nymphs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The nymphal, the nymphal termites, Greg. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. And they, they're winged. They've got, they've got two sets of wings. They're equal length. They're different than the winged ants that you see right now because winged ants have two different lengths of wings. They have two wings oh. on each side, but different lengths. Ants have segmented bodies, thin waist, termites. This is an important termites, because Comic-Con, Lexington had Comic-Con, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't some sort of winged nymph from Comic-Con no, that came up to Louisville to settle. Right, right, right here in the right here in the vial, Greg, right okay. here in the vial, some samples of them. And, yeah, they will eat a lot of wood in your house. And there's a lot of damage in the house where these swarmers came and out. Let, of, so. let us note that Brad is holding a, a bottle of swarmers or whatever. Yes, yes. And he's excited about this. That oh, he's terribly finalist. excited. Yes. It really is. Yeah. All right. So good. <laughs> um, a reminder, if you're thinking of selling your home, we have. Uh, reviews, which we really love. We love to get reviews. We love to, when I buy things, I've used Amazon, for example. I'm looking at reviews. If you want to see some of our reviews, head to louisvillesellerstalk.com or louisvillezillow.com or louisvillegoogle.com. All right, Cora Nisha, and that's not her real name. She's a local area real estate agent. She asked us not to use her name. She recently received a showing request from a buyer. But he sounded a little unusual. That's her words, a little unusual on the phone. And she decided to pass on showing the property that he was calling about. Nisha has two questions for us, and specifically you, Cora. Does she face any problems for turning down the buyer's request for a showing? That's the first one. Why don't we answer that one? Any... Again, another great question. So yeah. let me clarify. Is she the listing agent? Well, that's good. She doesn't identify. I presume she is because... Uh, he called her to see this specific home. Yeah. Okay. So I will answer it as if she could be a potential buyer's agent only or the listing agent. Okay. Good. okay. So Good. if she's the buyer's agent and she's considering taking on a client and they may seem suspect, um, you know, I think you listen to your intuition. I think realtor safety is very important. There's a number of cases that are quite astonishing, both at the state level and national level, um, that gives us good reason to pause, uh, set up policies and procedures to protect ourselves from dangers. And ultimately, I'm a big fan of listening to your intuition. So you can pick who you work with. You can pick your clients. Um, and if that is someone that she feels like she doesn't need to take on right now, it could be for good reason. Make that referral, pass that along, um, whatever the case may be. Now, if she's a listing agent and someone has called to look at a property that she has listed, mm -hmm. um, there could be concerns regarding any protected classes uh, under fair housing uh, that may be able to lodge a discrimination complaint. So, you know, again, that may require a little bit more understanding of that fact pattern and what made her feel 
uneasy. And if there was anything in part of that conversation that could lend itself to a claim against her for discrimination, okay, and not showing the property. Um, so it really would just depend on the facts. And I completely understand the concern for confidentiality. So I would ask that she reach out to an attorney, a trusted legal expert to have that more intimate conversation. Uh, but that would be uh, one of my primary concerns would be a potential discrimination clause uh, case, excuse me. And then also, of course, the listing agent owes the fiduciary obligations to their client, to the mm -hmm. seller. So by turning down that showing um, and potentially unrightfully maybe doing so or unjustly doing so, um, did you have that conversation with your client? Did they share in your same intuition? Um, did they advise you to turn that down? What does that look like? So um, yeah. there's rarely ever a yes or no answer when it comes to law. Uh, certainly so, not real estate yeah, law either. Not on so this we one. need to know a little bit more facts. So, Corey, she could have given this to one of her fellow agents to show who might be more comfortable with the, with the – the conversation that she had had with absolutely with depending on if it was a safety concern if something was said that maybe made her fearful yeah. uh, to show that home by herself yeah. so it just depends on the fact pattern and we'd want to unpack that and explore that a little to really better advise what could be at risk so there are risks for real estate agents folks if you're listening and you're you haven't heard the news in the past couple of years there have been a number of attacks and murders of real estate agents so that that is a real concern there, she asks in her follow-up question, are there any ways to check credentials of a buyer before going out on a showing? So, Greg, you've got your, your wife, Casey, who's an agent. Are you familiar with what we use? Yeah, for, forewarn, uh, right. the, uh, our board has been nice enough over the past couple of years to supply, uh, put our dollar to good use. And it's one of the best things we have because you can use it to basically look if anybody has a record, if you get one of those feelings. And obviously, and to go to Cora's point, you know, you, you get to choose your clients. If, if, if we advise um, our agents, if you don't feel safe, uh, if you're concerned, we have a pool of agents that we can also hand off. We've got we've got some agents who are former LMPD who carry who could go show support. So we have a good team support to make sure yeah. that that the end user and, and customers are served and safely. And our and our agents are as safe as they can be as well. But, yeah, um, there are a method of ways. And and if you are a possible client, don't be creepy. Tell us Absolutely. what you want. I think we'll help forewarn, you out. forewarn is a great product. It's a yeah. great service. And I think also I see a lot of agents that when they feel unsafe, they bring their spouse with them. Mm -hmm. They bring another trusted peer with them. I've also seen the old red folder. I'm putting that in air quotes for you guys that aren't logging on to watch us live, which you totally should. You should see this headset. Uh, but yes, they'll say uh, they'll have somebody on the phone and they'll say, I need you to get that red folder off my desk. And that means call 911 immediately, that there is a danger, uh, that they are afraid. And certainly there's a way that you walk through a home. You want to make sure that uh, you are not going first, that you're not in a position to be uh, locked in the basement, for instance. So there's a way that you can tour the home safely with a um, client by yourself as well. Don't don't park your car in the driveway first. Park on the street if you can, so you have a way to escape, that you wouldn't be trapped in. There's lots of different techniques that we teach as well. Um, whether you are a, a, a perspective buyer going to visit on your own or a real estate agent listen right and Open we should houses are a real danger too Greg. exactly you're right so make sure as agents uh, my fellow agents listening that someone knows when you're showing a house or having an open house that someone else knows where you are at all times leaving a message for a friend or family member so they can keep track of where you are at that moment in the event that there is a problem they know where to send police so those are some of the things that we are worried about uh, from our realtor standpoint folks that for those of you non-realtors it's a it's a tough job sometimes with the security we're going to take a break when we come back more of your questions and some other unusual things brand has a interesting piece of insight into some companies we won't name which ones charging an enormous amount of money you really want to hear what happened here because it's it's just very telling but first we're going to take a break with us again core henderson Pitt & Frank at uh, LLC and her direct number over at Pitt & Frank is 895-9900. She's a great attorney. Pitt & Frank does a great job. Also, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service, 844-411-TEAM. My son Greg is here just having cleaned up a spill in the kitchen. And if you're thinking of selling or buying, I've got a team of 10 agents, and I am ready to come out and help you. It's 
free and no obligation for a consult. We can do it by Zoom, by phone, or I'll come out. We can talk about what the process looks like, what the path is to get the home on the market and closed and for you to get into your new dream home. You can reach me anytime at 376 5483. We're back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHAS, Bob Sekoler, the Louisville Real Estate Show. We are here till the top of the hour with us. Continuing, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service. They come in as a team. They do a great job. You can reach them at 844-411-TEAM. Also, Cora Henderson, who's a phenomenal attorney over at Pitt & Frank LLC. Uh, she's got a wealth of knowledge. If you haven't heard the first half of the show, you listen and stick around. You'll understand what I'm saying. You can reach Cora at 895-9900. My son, Greg, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more is with us. And also, you can reach me if you're thinking of selling or buying. I'd love to be able to help you. You can reach me on my cell phone, 376-5483. All right, so we move on. Brad is working on a, a, a something that's fascinating. You know he has uh, two businesses now, not only home team, but also is a team bug out? Yes, that's yeah, correct. Team a lot bug of, out. A lot of teams. Yeah, a lot of teams. So, so explain what happened without using the name of a competitor that's out there. Go ahead. Well, we got we were contacted by a listing agent on a home that uh, another pest control company went in and gave a quote of almost $19,000 to remove mice from the house. Now, the way that the, the the report was written up and the information that was given to the sellers, you would have thought that there were the, the house is completely overrun with mice. We went in and uh, did our own inspection, found evidence of mice, yes, but didn't find any, any that were live or active. We did find droppings, I mean, other telltale signs. And so when we, we kind of put our battle plan together you know, looking at exclusion material, closing up holes, sealing up gaps outside the house to prevent them from coming in, taking care of the mice that were in the house, setting monitoring and bait stations around the house for a, a period of time. All that work uh, was uh, significantly less than what uh, than what the other company was charging. I mean, to the to the tune of about five percent of what the uh, hmm. my price was versus the uh, the competitor. So you know, there's there's fair pricing and there's there's certainly you know take advantage of pricing. And I think in this case, the seller realized, yeah, I mean, going out and getting a second quote, uh, save them, you know, on the order of $18,000. So uh, yeah, not, not all things are, you know, created equally, but, you know, removing mice from the house is, you know, there, there's a little bit of art and science to it, but I don't think there's an extra eighteen thousand dollars worth of worth of art to it because I'm using the high tech mouse traps anyway, so I'm already using all the technology and that, uh, that can be used. The number for Team Bug Out for folks. So is... yeah, Team Bug Out is five zero two three five seven 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 zero zero. Also, something else happened this week as well. Brad was a party to it. We had a client in Frankfurt who had uh, problems with foundation. She had gotten a company, and they. They billed her X amount of dollars. It was was close to twenty thousand, and uh, we had sent in uh, Aqualock to take a look. And uh, Jay Kraft and his folks came back with a a quote of half of that, yeah. just about half of that. So, but you got to be careful. Shop around. We've got uh, people that we work with, and if I don't know somebody, Brad does, or one of the team members does. So just know, give me a call. We've been more than happy to help you. Cora, this one is for you. Samantha bought a home last year. During that buying frenzy, then the year before, remember how that was just crazy. Things flying off the market, 25 plus uh, offers on a home, which in some cases still happening in certain priced homes right now. Her agent at the time told her one way to be at the top of the list for the seller to accept her offer was to waive a home inspection. Brad, you you were heard about these types of things. Oh, yes. But now Samantha says that she's got a problem because several other types of problems with the house have popped up that a home inspection would probably have, have caught. So Samantha's parents are urging her to take the real estate agent to court since it was the agent's suggestion to waive the home inspection. I'm hearing more and more about this, Cora. Have you heard about it? And what would you su suggest to Samantha in terms of how to deal with this type of a problem? 
Well, Bob, I have to say that's quite the loaded question. Yeah. Uh, so let me unpack that just a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, certainly, I would never advise any of my real estate agents to encourage anyone to waive their inspection. I understand that last year's competitive market, and even to some extent, we may still see that now in certain experiences where it might lend itself conducive to eliminate contingencies in a multiple offer situation in order to get your offer accepted or to look more attractive. You're window dressing it for that seller to select. Um, so certainly the, the fewer contingencies, the better in the seller's eyes. But there are a number of ways that they could have minimized that and still maintain their right to inspect. They could have um, allowed for the inspection, but eliminated the contingency, okay? They could have reduced the time frame in which to do so. Uh, a lot of inspectors, just like Brad's team, can be available uh, very promptly for their real estate professionals. So do you need the full 10 days? Probably not. You can have that lined up when you make your offer, maybe just a three-day window. You could still accomplish a competitive look um, and hopefully get your offer accepted, but not giving your right uh, up to uh, inspect. So I would never advise my agent to say that. Now, with that said, it concerned me that said the buyer is now experiencing problems with the house that may have been revealed by an inspection. So the attorney in me wants to say, mm, wait, okay, let me take a look at that seller's disclosure. Because while the seller may have picked a contract based on a waiver of inspections, that does not eliminate their requirements under disclosure laws. So I would want to take a look at that seller's disclosure to see if a case can be made for um, non-disclosure or misrepresentation, if you will, and perhaps pursue uh, some legal remedies there for the buyer to get some monetary damages to make those repairs that they perhaps would have requested had they had their um, regular inspection provisions, their normal um, inspection provisions to the contract. So should this agent be concerned, I guess what is what the final question here, um, whoever her agent was, that this could come back to bite her, the, the agent, and maybe so what, other concern, agents. The concern is that they're saying it was the agent's uh, right, recommendation. Not, right. Do exactly. not now. Is that, you know, obviously, is that their interpretation of he said, she said? Did the agent say it's a contingency piece? And and as we would train our agents, and and as I've heard most of, many of our own agents do, is they explain, you know, this is what makes the offer look good. You still have the right to inspect. You always should inspect look at the disclosure report and use all those things to make an informed decision yeah but did she you know, and, i know and, what i think but cora will tell us what yeah what thoughts car the legal yeah. mind yeah. Sure. So from a legal mind standpoint, I mean, certainly you're looking at a number of issues, but you would want to unpack that fact pattern to see exactly, you know, the the she said, she said, uh, or whatever the case may be. So uh, there's a complaint process. They could lodge a complaint with the KREC, which is going to be the licensing body uh, that they may or may not uh, find sanctions against that licensee, but they would do an investigation to see um, if they did, in fact, breach uh, licensing law or um did not represent their client as they should. Also, though, uh, a breach of fiduciary duty could lead itself to another type of legal claim uh, against that agent. And so that would be, a, a, again, looking at the fact pattern to decide, did they breach any of the number of, uh, we call it old car, Bob, if you remember that back from mm. real estate school, mm -hmm. a number of the fiduciary duties that that real estate licensee owes their clients. Yeah. Uh, so we, we want to take, take a look at that and see based upon what truly was said or what can be proven that was said um, and if there would be a claim against them. But I would not want to discount the ability um, to take a look at that seller's disclosure and still contact the seller for a contribution because ultimately we want to help the buyer be able to make those repairs to the home that may be a safety issue, Bob, uh, maybe some deficiencies that need to get solved relatively quickly. So contacting an attorney to take a look at their remedies uh, is always going to be a, a good, useful choice in that instance. And the the owner of the new home has an, a year or a year from when they should have known about it, right? She's Absolutely, her head. Bob. Yep. So it's yep. not necessarily a year from when they closed, but a year of when they discovered. Right. So if they discover, let's say, I'm going to use the M word, we're going to say mold, they discover a mold issue on year two, then they would need to bring that action within a year from that time of discovery. There you go. All right, we go back. Great answer, by the way. And by the way, you should know that Greg's wife, Casey, one of our great agents, 
does schedule with home team when putting in an offer. So it's in the offer. Yeah, it's often that, scheduled before the contract yeah. is uh, even accepted. Yeah, you know, that's we, what, we, that's we what call. Yeah. If you got an opening up, we, we get, yeah. we, we get the slot in. If we don't win, we make sure we inform them. Um, but they're all, you know, that's, that's what having a good team around you does for you. Exactly. Yeah. So good points on all. So uh, Brad, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about radon. Remember we were going over yeah. radon mitigation. Drew heard our show, and uh, he was wondering, and he's concerned about dangers of radon in a home that's a leading cause of lung cancer among non-smokers, second leading among smokers. But Drew wants to know, so how does radon occur, and where does it actually yeah. come from? He's looking, looking for more nuts and bolts. Okay, so radon is is actually a breakdown of a uranium gas, and and it's a it's a material that is in the rock that we are sitting on. There's two types. We have permeable uh, rock in this area, and we have impermeable. The impermeable, if your house happens to be sitting over an area that's impermeable, then likelihood of radon in, in your house is lower than a house that has permeable um, karst type of, of rock under them. Unfortunately, the area that we're in, because of all the cave systems, because of the, the karst uh, makeup of the ground, it's just, it's it's hit and miss. You know, there's there's pockets of radon neighborhoods. I think I'd mentioned that radonmap.com uh, website uh -huh. where you can kind of see where the hot spots are around the area. Um, but there are pockets, you know, like if you look at Norton Commons, most of the builders there just build a, a passive radon system into the home. It's it's set up from the time that they build it. They test it once the house is complete. If if the radon level is above that four picocuries per liter, then what they'll do is they'll just attach the uh, the fan and uh, then that will then become an active uh, radon mitigation system. So there's areas in town that it's just it's just where they are the you know nearly every home has it uh, and then there's other areas of town that are less likely so you got to kind of look at your neighbors uh, see whether or not they've got those big white pipes uh, sticking out the side of their house going up to the roof line and uh, you'll have a rough idea of uh, what's going on in in your neighborhood but yeah it's a it's a radioactive gas that's yep. from the breakdown of uranium and that puts a wrap on today's show. It went rather quickly, I'll tell you, from our standpoint. Again, my thanks to Cora Henderson, Pitt & Frank, LLC. They do a great job of closing the loans, and they do some other stuff as well. We'll get into that down the road. And our thanks to Cora, who did a great job on her first day out with us. 895-9900 is her direct uh, phone number over at Pitt & Frank. Also, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service. You can reach Brad and his team, 844 411 team my son gregor does our marketing photography and so much more and if you're thinking about selling your home you can give me a call free no obligation i'll come out or we'll talk about what the process is you can call me at 376-5483 or go to bobsellmyhome.com which will take us to the main website we sell louisville.com a lot of words there just know you can reach me that's it for now we're out of time see you next sunday on News Radio 840 WHAS.